Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to talk about uh, numbering designations for ships, how they get their whole numbers, what the uh, alphanumeric designators for them mean. Uh, oftentimes I hear people who are trying to take these designators and uh, ascribe an acronym to them. And uh, many of them just were not created to have acronyms. Some of them were, so it gets confusing. Uh, so that's why I wanted to talk about this today. So let's talk about why there, these numbers exist at all. Well, early ships didn't have whole numbers. Uh, U.S. Navy ships up through uh, the Spanish-American War, uh, many of them were not assigned whole numbers. It was really the late 1800s when we started building steel ships that you start to uh, see whole number designators come up. The problem is the Navy likes to reuse ship names. So for example, there have been seven or eight, and we might even be building the ninth Enterprise at this point. Uh, other famous ships, uh, you, you see every generation of ships has one of that particular name. Uh, so how do you know which Enterprise I'm talking about? Am I talking about the World War II aircraft carrier? Am I talking about an older sailing ship? Am I talking about the modern uh, nuclear carrier or the carrier that's being built? We know because of the whole number that's been ascribed to them. Uh, another reason why you ascribe a whole number to a ship is because the ship isn't officially named until it's christened. For capital ships like battleships and carriers, uh, they could be receiving over two years of work uh, before they're christened and up to a decade of design work prior to that. So uh, you know what the next whole number in a series is going to be. Uh, so you can say that this is the design work for the BB-61 class, which are the Iowas, and uh, that these two hulls that we have laid down at this point are BB-61 and BB-62, which in 1942, when they're actually christened, become Iowa and New Jersey. But there were already earlier Iowas and New Jerseys. Uh, battleship number four was also in Iowa. Battleship number 16 was also in New Jersey, so it, it's good to have these numbers to designate them. So, uh, battleships have the designation BB. That doesn't mean anything. I've heard people try to call it battle boats. Uh, it's just the U.S. Navy was using a two-letter designator at that time. Uh, the reason we went with a two-letter designator is so that we could have more different types of ships, more variants in our types of ships, and because the British were already using a single-letter designator uh, for their vessels. So we didn't want our numbers to be the same as their numbers in case we ever got allied with them and started talking about that sort of stuff. So um, all of these early designators are two digits, and usually they repeat. So, for example, submarines are SS. That doesn't mean anything as an acronym, it just means submarines. Destroyers are DD. Uh, frigates become FF. I've heard people call that uh, fast frigates. Um, it, it's a nice use of the acronym. It's, it's not how it was intended. It's just a double letter designator. Other ships, uh, particularly in the cruiser field, are harder to uh, designate. There were a number of different types of cruisers that came out before designators started. So initially you had uh, protected cruisers, and then you had armored cruisers, and then uh, light armored cruisers, and then those evolved into treaty cruisers, which were later designated heavy and light. Uh, so when the Navy started ascribing uh, names to cruisers, because there were so many different classifications of them, they got one letter, C, to say that they were cruisers, uh, and then they got 
a second letter after that to tell what type they were. So originally CA was for armored cruisers and CL was for light armored cruisers. Uh, and many of the protected cruisers were renumbered as light cruisers. Um, but not all of them. Some of them didn't receive hull numbers at all. Some of them didn't receive uh, cruiser hull numbers. They received IX hull numbers, which is miscellaneous unidentified uh, types of ships, uh, which would be the older commissioned ships in the Navy, such as uh, the, the sailing ship Constellation, which was IX-21. Uh, she was still a commissioned vessel. They were ascribing whole numbers to everything. Uh, they needed to distinguish her from the Battlecruiser Constellation, which was being built at that time. So she got a random number designator there. Um, some of the early treaty cruisers, which were all 10,000 tons, were labeled as light cruisers because they were not armored cruisers, CA. Uh, but then a later treaty said that any cruisers with eight inch guns were heavy cruisers. Any cruisers with six inch guns were light cruisers, regardless of what their weight were. And some light cruisers were heavier than some heavy cruisers. Uh, so the US Navy went back and renumbered all of the eight inch armed cruisers as CA armored cruisers, and that became heavy cruiser. All of the uh, light cruisers with six inch guns remained as CLs. Uh, battle cruisers you would think would be labeled as BC, battle cruiser. Nope. Uh, they were a type of large cruiser, so they were given a C designator. Uh, and then they just doubled up with the C, so CC. Uh, some people have said that this means cruiser capital. Uh, I don't believe that shows up in any official documents. I think it's just like DD or BB where they doubled up the letter. Um, aircraft carriers also got a C designator. Um, some people say that this is because aircraft carriers evolved out of cruisers, so they get cruiser and then V for the type of aircraft they carry. Some people say that it means uh, carrier and then the type of aircraft they carry. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which, but CV is aircraft carrier. Uh, the V is more or less a random letter designator uh, for heavier than aircraft, as opposed to Z, which was a more or less random letter designator for lighter than aircraft, which the Navy also operated some of during this time and operated ships uh, which could service those lighter than aircraft. So they needed to designate between carriers of heavier than aircraft and carriers of lighter than aircraft. Uh, lighter than aircraft, of course, didn't stick around very long, so the CVs stayed in service. Um, none of the lighter than aircraft were, were in service or had carriers um, after the interwar period. Uh, I have heard it say that the V is for the French word Voltor, which is to fly, and the Z is for the German word Zeppelin, which is their version of dirigibles or lighter than aircraft. I think that that's just trying to ascribe an acronym to the random letter designators, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's out there in a number of sources that that's why those names exist. Um, so now that you've gotten all the basic warships there of the World War II period, uh, there are some other letters that are added post-war, uh, such as G and N, uh, and that starts to see the two-letter designators uh, become three or more letter designators. So, for example, there was uh, the N letter, which was added to nuclear-powered ships. So a nuclear-powered submarine is SSN whereas a conventional submarine is just SS. Um, you also see A's added for attack vessels. So there were some attack submarines as opposed to normal submarines, which were SSKs. Uh, and there were some attack aircraft carriers as opposed to uh, fleet carriers or, uh, or helicopter carriers. So they became CVA for a brief period of time, and then that was deleted. Uh, there were also light 
carriers, CVLs, uh, and helicopter carriers, which have an H in their name. And they tend to lose their CV designators and get uh, an, an L uh, designator. So like uh, LPH is Landing Platform Helicopters, which is the acronym ascribed to them. Uh, modern ships tend to have three-letter designators, and uh, they do tend to ascribe a, uh, an acronym to them, with the exception of older acronyms that carry over, like frigates or aircraft carriers. Uh, also, Gs were added for ships that carried guided missiles as their primary weapon, so a C... G would be a guided missile cruiser as opposed to a CA, an armored cruiser, or a heavy cruiser. No two battleships, for example, have the same hull number. So there's only one BB-62. So even though the names are reused, the uh, numbers are not. So you know that BB-62 is a unique ship compared to New Jersey, which could be one of two battleships or a submarine. Uh, the same number can be used with different classifications of ship. So there is a CG-62, a CV-62, a BB-62, a DD-62, uh, but those are all different classes of vessel. So even though ships have sequential numbering systems, uh, not all the numbers end up getting used. Uh, so, for example, there were a number of ships that were authorized during World War II, or that were started construction during World War II, but were never completed. Uh, so, for example, BB-66, uh, the battleship Kentucky, was never completed. That whole number was assigned, though. Uh, so if you're looking at a list of completed ships, you're going to see it skip 65, 66. Uh, BB-67, uh, the Montana, was authorized. A name was given, a number was given, uh, but the ship was never laid down or built. Uh, so a number of World War II era ships were canceled because the war ended. Uh, Additionally, you'll see gaps in numbers when the Navy wanted to do something cute. Uh, so, for example, Spruance class destroyers go up into the 900s, um, but for the next class of destroyer, the Arleigh Burks, which are guided missiles, they go back down to the 50s. Uh, and then the next class of conventional destroyer that was being laid down, the Zumwalt, they designated DD. 1,000. Um, so they just skipped a couple of names to make it this millennial vessel instead of uh, picking up the numbering where it had left off. Uh, this also happened with Seawolf class submarines, which were the, the future submarines for the 21st century. So they went from uh, SS 700 and something to uh, SSN 21, uh, and then there were only three vessels of that class made. They were too expensive, and they went back to uh, cheaper Virginia class boats, which dropped out of the Seawolf numbering system and went back to the Los Angeles numbering system in the uh, SSN 700 series. Uh, so, so there are uh, gaps in the numbering system. There were also times when ships had their hull uh, designations changed. So for a period of time, uh, the carrier Enterprise CVN-65 was renumbered as an attack carrier, so she became CVAN-65, and then it went back to just CVN. Uh, some of the SSBN, Ballistic Missile Nuclear Submarines, have been uh, redesignated as SSGN, or Guided Missile Submarines. Uh, a lot of the cruisers went through this at one point or another in their career as they were converted over to guided missile or went from heavy, from light, uh, other things like that. Some of the early frigates and destroyer leaders were renumbered as 
cruisers later on in their life. Uh, so that does weird things with the numbering. Uh, so everything should be clear as mud at this point. The numbering system does not necessarily keep up with the changes in technology and the new stuff that's being added. Uh, and the Navy doesn't necessarily maintain the same naming and lettering conventions uh, over the course of time. So World War II conventions are a little bit different from modern conventions. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions about this confusing topic, feel free to leave them in the comments. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, and tune back in for the future uh, for more content. And if you'd like to support our channel and our museum and our mission, uh, check the description down below for a link uh, for ways to donate. Thanks for watching.